From TV4, WJXT, this is Eyewitness News, the one most people watch. With Tom Wills, Deborah Giannolis, meteorologist George Wendling with weather, Sam Kuvaris with sports, and the Eyewitness News team. Good evening, everyone. Five years before the Challenger disaster, NASA knew of problems with the O-ring seals in the booster rocket and had even come up with a solution. But that solution was never implemented. Those allegations from the New York Times, which reports NASA's brass was worried about the O-rings back in 1981. Last month, the space agency unveiled a new $300 million design of the seals, with the key element being a lock to keep them in place. But according to the Times report, a similar O-ring lock was developed five years ago. Leaky O-rings are blamed for the Challenger explosion. Cheryl McNair, whose husband Ron was one of the crew members, is suing Morton Fiacol, which designed the boosters. Her attorney says he may now file a separate suit against NASA. If it's not uh, broken, why fix it? They obviously knew it was flawed, defective, fatally defective, as a matter of fact. Right now, there is one other legal action pending against NASA, a $15 million wrongful death claim filed by Jane Smith, whose husband was also a member of the shuttle crew. Christ expects more complaints will be brought against NASA in the near future. A Jacksonville Navy reservist is taking legal action against the military. Today, a lawsuit was filed on behalf of a plaintiff referred to only as John Doe. He has been tested positive for the AIDS antibody HTLV-3. John Doe's active duty was terminated because of that test, which showed he had been exposed to AIDS but does not have the disease. I think to terminate somebody because they've tested positive for a disease that they don't have necessarily or don't, uh, aren't a carrier of it, can still ruin their reputation. The Navy would not comment on the suit other than to point out its policy issued last year. It says applicants found exposed to the virus are ineligible for naval service and the new recruits who are AIDS antibody positive will be discharged. However, the order says those who demonstrate no progressive clinical illness associated with the virus shall be retained in naval service. Alan Lee Davis tonight lost another appeal to escape the electric chair. The Florida Supreme Court rejected a request to call off Davis's execution, which is scheduled for tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock at Florida State Prison. This afternoon, a similar request was denied by Circuit Judge Major Harding here in Jacksonville. Davis was sentenced to die for the murders of 37-year-old Nancy Weiler and her two young daughters in their Holiday Harbor home four years ago. Davis's attorneys are now appealing to the federal courts. A Tallahassee judge has rejected two attempts to strike the lottery question from the November ballot, but a third part of the challenge is still pending. Judge J. Lewis Hall ruled the referendum is not misleading, as lottery foes had argued. He also found no fault with the referendum's legal language. But opponents also contend the petition signatures used to place the question on the ballot were obtained fraudulently. They point to campaign literature, which described the lottery as a way to raise money for public schools. There is no guarantee of that without an act of the legislature. A court hearing on that part of the challenge has not been scheduled yet. The state's other gambling question, legalized casinos, drew opposition today from a coalition of law enforcement agencies. The police spokesmen say they're joining with the anti-gambling group No Casinos, which is led by Lieutenant Governor Wayne Mixon. The state's Department of Law Enforcement contends casinos have been a boon for criminal elements in Atlantic City. It's crystal clear in Atlantic City that in the ancillary services to the casinos, whether it's construction, maintenance, linen service, waiters and waitresses, unions or whatever, organized crime has a strong foothold. And through those services, they maintain control of the casinos and the industries there. Dempsey warns legalized casinos in Florida will force taxpayers to increase police budgets by millions of dollars. The runoff election is still one week away, yet candidates from both parties are already planning how to defeat opposition come November 4th. The final heat in the race for governor is expected to be particularly heated. So far in North Florida, the Republican effort has been very low-key. But as Eyewitness News reporter Carolyn Miles tells us, that's about to change. I think, uh, uh, frankly, his votes decriminalize marijuana possession against tough penalties for drug smugglers uh, characterize him really more than liberal. I never voted to decriminalize marijuana. That's just plain out flat wrong. Here in North Florida, the contest between the Democratic gubernatorial hopefuls has been in the news for weeks. And if it's not in the news, you can't miss the candidates' ads. Steve Padgett, endorsed by two-thirds of our leading newspapers. The future. This is the man who's been clearing the path. Attorney General Jim Smith. On the other hand, little has been seen or heard from here from Republicans Lou Fry or Bob Martinez. But that's about to change. Last week, Martinez's banner began flying in Orange Park outside his new campaign headquarters. Despite the fact that Martinez hasn't been getting as much publicity as the Democrats, 
His local campaign coordinator says luring Democrats to the GOP should be easy. The supporters of, uh, of one uh, of a very hostile campaign such as this event are going to find it difficult to join their, uh, their arch enemy. Our, uh, we will have a tremendous opportunity to gain uh, the supporters of whom, whomever the losing candidate may be. Fry campaign staffers feel confident about their standing in Duval County, pointing out they won here in the primary and expect to get stronger by picking up disillusioned Democrats after the runoff. Local GOP chairman Norma Smith points out that many Democrats have already changed their allegiance. Uh, where it used to be when you, you'd go to register voters, you know, you'd have 10 percent Republican uh, people to register as Republican and, and the rest Democrat. But I, you know, I registered, report, um, registered voters on Saturday uh, at Regency and it was almost 50-50. Smith says both state and local Republican candidates should do well here this fall. The GOP will step up its push to get voters to the polls in mid-October. Carolyn Miles, Channel 4, Eyewitness News. A transportation talent search. That story is next on Eyewitness News. Rhodes Furniture has closed their doors and Rhodes will remain closed until tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Behind those closed doors, Rhodes Furniture is preparing for their biggest and best moonlight sale ever. And it happens tomorrow night from 6 till 10 p.m. Four tremendous hours of incredible price reductions with savings up to 72% store-wide. Make your plans now to shop Rhodes Furniture tomorrow night from 6 till 10 p.m. Rhodes' biggest and best moonlight sale ever with savings up to 72% store-wide. Don't miss it. This has been a test. If it has caused a real pizza emergency, you are instructed to go directly to Pizza Hut and order their famous pan pizza with your favorite toppings. When the very first Saab was introduced, it was too small. Not much to look at. Kind of uncomfortable for passengers and a little weird. But was it fun to drive? The latest Saab, the 9000, has none of those characteristics, except one. Matheny Imports, Jacksonville's exclusive Saab dealer. For small business problems, let a SCORE counselor help. It's free and confidential. Service Corps of Retired Executives, SCORE, 791-3104. Members of the Jacksonville Transportation Authority have begun plowing through resumes in search of a new...